Eyewitness News with live breaking news. And breaking news, tensions running high across L.A. after another night of protests uh, leading to multiple arrests. We have live pictures now of the National Guard, which has been uh, activated across L.A., and you can see them gathering there at the L.A. Convention Center. Good morning, I'm John Gregory. And I'm Rachel Brown. We are live on ABC7, abc7.com, and streaming wherever you are on the ABC7 Los Angeles app. We want to get straight to the latest on the protests against police brutality happening here in Los Angeles. They are in response to the killing of George Floyd. Many peaceful demonstrations took place yesterday, while some once again turned violent. And we're still working to find out just how many people have been arrested. Meanwhile, the National Guard arrived overnight after Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency for Los Angeles. After all of these protests, there's a lot of damage across the LA area this morning. Scott Rive joins us live in Air 7 HD with a look at the aftermath. Scott. Yeah, what we're looking at actually, John, is the back of the Staples Center where the National Guard has set up. This is going to be their command post. And we understand a thousand soldiers have been dispatched and boy, it's real deterrent to what we saw last night when these vehicles get out on the street. I want to open up out of the shot a little bit. Uh, the convention center is turning out to be a good place, this parking area, because from here they can get on the 110 freeway north if they need to into downtown or on the 10 west and head towards that Fairfax district in West Hollywood. But more units are coming in every single moment here. There's not a lot of traffic to hinder them for getting into the areas they will need to, at least not at this hour. And some of the streets in downtown Los Angeles have been shut down, so consider that when you travel. But you can tell there are large vehicles, there are Humvees, there are soldiers here. Uh, those weapons, those vehicles, those soldiers out on the street, they're hoping will be a deterrent so we don't see tonight what we saw last night. John, Rachel. All right, Scott, thank you. And we have a team, we have team coverage across the Southland this morning, but we start with Eyewitness News reporter Jade Hernandez. She is live in the Fairfax district with exclusive video showing a vape shop get ransacked last night. Rachel, we have been surveying the damage this morning and we're back to one shop whose business owner shared with us his devastation. And this is part of the reason why. Rachel, look at this. This is his door. You can see completely gone and you can climb through his shop right here and walk straight in through the front window. His entire shop destroyed this morning. There's not one group out there claiming responsibility for the violence or looting, but the chaos felt can actually be seen when you watch this. This exclusive video shared with us by local smoke and vape depot owner Hani Botros. He's the owner of the store. This is exclusive surveillance video from the smoke and vape depot located on South Fairfax Avenue. Owner Hani Botros told us he couldn't believe he could see looters running in waves to steal from his store, which has been in the Fairfax district for six years. He told me he couldn't have imagined this happening, especially since they've been closed for business for 10 weeks. And we're so excited about reopening to the community. He said looters and vandals stole not only his merchandise, but his livelihood. What's the purpose of, of, of destroying something that's not yours? Like they were even snatching from everybody. Like a guy, I saw him holding a product, like about $200, $300 worth of uh, products, and they started fighting on which one is gonna steal it. It's unbelievable. Governor Newsom activated the National Guard, members of which we saw walking in twos around the neighborhood at sunup. They were armed, their presence strong. Not only were businesses looted, but LAPD cruisers set on fire right here in the Fairfax district. Larger retailers also affected and damaged, including the Apple Store and Nordstrom. Target even announced closures of nearly 50 stores in California. And I want to show you, this is the club that Hani Botros found in his store. He said this was one of the instruments used to actually smash the front windows and the door. Reporting live from the Fairfax District, Jade Hernandez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Okay, Jade, thanks for that report. Meanwhile, Eyewitness News reporter Leticia Juarez continues our live team coverage. She has more from business owners trying to clean up this morning. Leticia. Well, good morning, John and Rachel. Yeah, I'm here in the Fairfax District also where I'm standing at the outside of Goose Salon. It's the salon that you see right there where they had their windows smashed in. We saw as residents were coming out this morning, finding what had happened out here and began volunteering their services to help clean up. As I mentioned this morning, people awoke to find that their businesses, their city had been looted, vandalized, and in some cases burned. The National Guard was called out to help and keep the peace and patrol the streets as the cleanup got underway this morning. 
LA City Mayor Garcetti requested the manpower following the unrest. Initially, protesters led a peaceful march through the streets to protest the death of George Floyd. But as the protests ended, that's when some of the looting and vandalizing of the businesses began. Several shops had their windows broken, including the hair salon I mentioned there. A pizza eatery on Melrose, an employee told me that they were able to save their shop by evacuating businesses and boarding up their shop as they watched another nearby business getting looted and burned. I packed up my musical instruments. We just had everything ready to throw in the car if the fires were going to spread. Don't loot small businesses because you don't know how hard they work to like get their, their this is their livelihood. Now, many small business owners tell us that they were set to reopen, including the salon next week as the stay at home orders and some of the restrictions had been lifted. Now she doesn't know when her salon will be reopened, as well as another business just a little ways down, also telling me that until he knows this unrest is done, he's not going to be reopening his shop anytime soon either. Reporting in the Fairfax District, Leticia Juarez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Leticia, thank you for that update. And here in L.A., the LAPD has mobilized its entire department in response to this, responding only to priority calls. The mobilization also means the department has canceled all days off for officers. We're uh, doing everything we can to facilitate this, uh, you know, this, this outrage, uh, the many, many feelings that law enforcement shares uh, with, with many that we're listening to and hearing and trying to, to give a voice to. Yesterday, we saw crowds of demonstrators facing off with police officers. Patrol cars were targeted and vandalized. You can see this police cruiser fully engulfed in flames. Uh, meantime, in the wake of Floyd's death, murder and manslaughter charges have been filed against Derek Chauvin. Prosecutors say Chauvin had his knee pressed against Floyd's neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, including for 2 minutes and 53 seconds when Floyd was unresponsive. The Department of Justice said a full investigation of this incident is a top priority. All four officers were at the scene who were at the scene have been fired. We will have continuing coverage of the protests and their aftermath here on ABC 7. In the 11 o'clock hour, we actually plan to hear from LAPD Chief Michael Moore. You can get the latest news alerts by downloading our free ABC 7 Los Angeles app. Let's get a check on weather with Alex Cheney. John, Rachel, thank you. It is a cloudy start to your Sunday morning outside. These clouds are going to be sticking around for a little bit in the morning hours, and then they'll leave us as we head into the afternoon. 66 degrees over in Malibu right now. Daytime highs are a little bit warmer than we were just yesterday. 73 by the Beach 71 in the mountains, upper 80s in the high desert. LA and Orange County will be into the upper 70s today, and the Inland Empire is in the mid 80s. So to come this morning is my seven-day forecast, where I'll be discussing a very nice, mild, comfortable week ahead for Southern California. John and Rachel. Okay, Alex, we'll check back with you. Still ahead, the protests have been widespread across the Southland. Up next, we're live in Orange County with what happened with the protests there. Plus, multiple Target stores closed across the Southland because of these protests. What the retailer is saying next. 10.08 on your Sunday morning, a live look at Irvine Spectrum. You see some more cloud covered today than we saw yesterday, but Alex said it should be a pretty nice day. Temperatures in the mid-70s. Welcome back. Cleanup underway across the Southland after one of, the, one of the worst nights of vandalism and looting seen this weekend. Eyewitness News reporter Jessica DeNova is live in Santa Ana outside a local college with a look at some of the damage there. Hi, Jessica. Hi, this is actually the Digital Media Center for Santa Ana College, where some of this graffiti also took place. It's on Bristol, again, where most of the vandalism happened last night with these protests. Now, we just saw the graffiti removal crew show up. They're filling up the tank with water right now. Some of the work has been done. You can see on the windows, some of that paint has been scrubbed off, but other windows are bordered. The windows higher up are shattered, and there's graffiti all along the floor here. And employees there tell me um, down the street here, a mile away at a shopping center that was even more heavily hit, they tell me that they watched all of this happen live on TV on social media, then they got calls from their alarm companies. Joining those workers in their cleanup efforts this morning are members of the community who say this is not their city. Dozens of volunteers showing up here and at other locations along the street with brooms, bags, paint to help clean up the mess. According to Santa Ana PD, at its peak, 600 demonstrators took to the streets last night. Police asking for assistance from surrounding law enforcement departments. About 550 officers and deputies were out enforcing. Now, police do say five arrests were made 
Two of those were minors, and I just heard minutes ago from the Orange County Sheriff's Department that four uh, four deputies were injured last night. One of those transferred to the hospital with minor injuries, but they're doing well. Officers say mortars, rocks, and bottles flew. They even saw fireworks. A city councilor says he's proud to see his residents turn out this morning to help their community. An employee at one vandalized business says he gets it. He says people are frustrated, and sometimes this is the only way for them to be heard. What we saw on TV last night doesn't represent Santa Ana, and it's just beautiful. It's just touching to see how the community has come out. Um, these are folks that are just volunteers. They live nearby. I'm not upset about what, they, what they're doing. I'm not upset about what they did here. Um, people are just really frustrated about what's going on. What are they going to listen to? Are they going to listen to silence, or are they going to listen to this? So people are a little just frustrated what's going on. So as these cleanup efforts continue, some of these windows are boarded, boarded up. There's a lot of talk going around here in Santa Ana, a lot of concern because there is another protest planned for this afternoon downtown that starts at 3 o'clock. A lot of the people going there are the same people that are out here working to clean up their community. They say this protest is permitted. This protest hopefully will remain peaceful. That's the plan. Again, that all starts at 3 o'clock downtown. Reporting live from Santa Ana, Jessica De Nova, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Jessica, thank you. And still ahead, we are talking with one of the co-founders of the local chapter of Black Lives Matter for her take on what's going on. Plus, we're getting a closer look at protests across the nation, including in Minnesota, where it all started. Welcome back. This is a live look over the National Guard staging area in downtown L.A. Here's Scott Reif in Air 7 HD. Yeah, Rachel, it's right behind the convention center. We're seeing uh, basically all these trucks. You've got Humvees, you've got big trucks, you've got medevacs. Uh, you've got all sorts of equipment here, a thousand soldiers with their weapons. And what they're hoping is this is going to be a big deterrent once they go from here out into the city if they're needed. Uh, to stop that looting that we saw last night. Now, they decided to stage here. We're seeing more vehicles come in by the moment, and you can tell it is a massive show here of uh, support. LAPD vehicles, this is their command post, and a real good spot, too, because from here you can really uh, get to the city on the Santa Monica Freeway or the 110. Gives them a lot of access and the ability to get into those areas quickly if they are needed. John, Rachel? All right. Thank you, Scott. I know you're going to keep your an eye on it. Most of the protests happening both here and nationwide are peaceful protests aimed at creating change out in the community and the country. And here to talk more about it is Dr. Melina Abdullah, the co-founder of the Black Lives Matter chapter here in Los Angeles. Thank you for being with us this morning. I have to say I was disgusted watching the killing of George Floyd and horrified uh, that this is a policy allowed in Minneapolis. So I want to know what are the specific policies that the Black Lives Matter organization is working on on a local and state level to address police brutality? Sure. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that you're focusing on the murder of George Floyd. Um, we need to really be focused on the fact that police continue to kill our people with impunity. Um, and the work that we're doing is around two things, the two things that we know to be most effective in ending the violence against our people at the hands of police. One is that the police who kill us and brutalize us need to be prosecuted. And so we're glad that Chauvin's being prosecuted. Of course, it's at a um, lesser level than we'd hoped. Um, but also there's three other um, police officers who were directly involved in the murder of George Floyd. They also need to be prosecuted. Then when we think about Los Angeles, um, since Mayor Garcetti and the district attorney, Jackie Lacey, have been in office, 601 people have been killed by police, and our district attorney refuses to charge those officers. Um, so that's number one in terms of policy. We need to engage in a practice where Police who are actually criminals are prosecuted when they abuse, brutalize, and kill our community members. The second thing that we're working on is making sure that we don't overspend on police, that we don't um, have police doing jobs that they have no business or expertise doing. In the city, the mayor has proposed a budget 
that allocates 54% of the city's general fund to LAPD. And we know that when police are empowered in such a way that they tend to be more abusive, they tend to be more emboldened. And we see that happening with stops of our people for accused violations of social distancing orders. We see the way in which LAPD has rolled in to abuse family members whose loved ones have already been killed. So I'm thinking especially of the family of A.J. Weber, who was 16 years old when L.A. County sheriffs murdered him after he was leaving a Super Bowl party. But then just last week, 20 LAPD officers ran into his family home, alleging that they saw someone with a gun in the neighborhood who might be in that home holding them hostage. And they really abused that family for a second, really a third time, because it was the second raid that they've done on that home. So yeah. when we overspend on police, it enables those kinds of things to happen. And, and Dr. Molina, I do want to get back to that. But, but second, I, I have to say I have been frustrated this morning because the full, sole focus right now should be George Floyd and all of the black lives wrongly taken. But instead, we're having to dedicate a lot of time in our newscast to talk about looting and violence. So I want to know what your response is to that. And are you working to keep Black Lives Matter protests safe and nonviolent? So one of the things that I, we really like media to do is to cover um, the protests fully. Um, the primary violence that's happened at the protests is police on protester violence. We have dozens of people who've been beaten, who've been shot with rubber bullets, including young people and teenagers shot in the face with rubber bullets by LAPD. Um, so it's easy to replace you know, property. It's not easy to replace people. We have um, violence being visited upon people at the protests. It's really important to point out that the reason people are out there is to protest police violence. And as they're protesting police violence, they're actually experiencing police violence. Dr. Molina, thank you for being with us. I wish we had more time because I have a lot more questions. It's an important conversation, but we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Rachel. Very happy Sunday morning, everybody. Got some clouds outside today, but we're looking at a day today. It's going to be really nice. 66 degrees in Malibu. We're going to be a little bit warmer today and also a little bit warmer as we head into Monday as well. So here's your seven day forecast from the low end 80s Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So not a huge warm up. And then as we head towards Thursday, we're going to have some cold air drop down. So that's going to lower our temperatures back to the mid end 70s with a chance of showers coming your way by Thursday. We may not get any. It'll be some very light rain, if anything, but definitely feeling a little bit cooler by Thursday everywhere. Valley's Inland Empire 82 degrees today, 87 by Monday, so a bit of a quicker warm up. We do get to the 90s by Wednesday and then the low end 80s for Thursday, Friday and Saturday with that chance of showers coming your way on Thursday. Beaches look nice from the low end 70s to the upper 60s by the time we hit Thursday and Friday, so uh, no problems there by the coast. Mountain communities will be in the low 70s through Monday, mid 70s and eventually the upper 70s as we head towards Wednesday, so conditions up in the mountains looking pretty good as well. And some really nice, mild, consistent stuff as we head into the rest of this week. The desert communities in the mid 80s outside, 86 today, then actually a bit of a cool down as we head towards Tuesday, 83 degrees there, then 87 on Wednesday. We see temperatures come down just a little bit for Thursday and Friday. We were talking about an excessive heat warning last week, not the case this week. Some really nice, mild, comfortable stuff in the seven day. John and Rachel. Good to hear, Alex. Thanks for that. Uh, before we continue to break in coverage, you want to take a moment to honor another group of local graduates. Congratulations to you all. Fury and frustration on full display in the wake of the death of George Floyd. Demonstrations erupted in a chaos across the nation, including Minneapolis, where Floyd died at the hands of a former police officer. 
Minneapolis police also confronted protesters after a curfew went into effect where they threw tear gas into the group. Meantime, Target is temporarily closing many of its stores due to this on due to this ongoing protest that's happening. This is videos from both Minneapolis and here in Los Angeles where stores have been looted. 175 Target stores are being shut down for now. 49 of those are here in California. In a statement, Target said the company is heartbroken by the death of George Floyd and is now focused on helping the community heal. Still ahead, we continue to cover breaking news of the protests and the damage left behind. Air 7 HD showing us live pictures of damage at the Whole Foods at the Grove. That's one area where a lot of protesters fled to or went yesterday. We're going to have more next. This is Eyewitness News with live breaking news. Breaking news now at 1030. Damage across the Southland because of protests all day yesterday overnight. Air 7 HD showing us uh, some of the damage overhead right now at the Grove at that Whole Foods there. Good morning. I'm Rachel Brown. And I'm John Gregory. We're live on ABC7, abc7.com and streaming wherever you are on the ABC7 Los Angeles app. Returning now to the latest on those ongoing protests. After some demonstrations turned violent in recent days, police have taken a number of people into custody. Nationwide, the Associated Press is reporting that in the last three days, police have arrested more than 1,600 people in 22 cities. Meanwhile, the National Guard arrived overnight in Los Angeles after Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency. And we do have team coverage this morning from the ground to the air. We want to start with Eyewitness News reporter Jade Hernandez. She is live in the Fairfax district this morning with a look at what's happening there. Hi, Jade. Good morning, Rachel. The cleanup hasn't even begun at this store because, as you can see, there is glass everywhere. A police officer hasn't been by to take a report yet, so the owner wants to leave everything as it was when he came here this morning. Now, you can only imagine the backload for officers and the chaos last night, but that chaos, you can actually see it when you watch this. It's exclusive video shared with us by a local store owner, the store owner of this smoke and vape depot. This is exclusive surveillance video located on South Fairfax Avenue, which is where we are this morning at the smoke and vape depot. Owner Hani Botros told us he couldn't believe he could see looters stealing from his store, which has been in the Fairfax district for six years. He told me he couldn't have imagined this happening, especially since they've been closed for business for 10 weeks and were so excited about reopening to the community. He said looters and vandals stole not only merchandise last night, but his livelihood. And even though there's not only one group out there claiming responsibility for the violence or the looting, he says this all has to stop. He says this with a heavy heart since he tells me he supports a movement for justice. I support protesting. I support people protesting in peace. Uh, I support to, 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 that we have to fight for any injustice that's happening for George Floyd, for anybody that has experienced some sort of discrimination, racism or police brutality. I support this 100%. Hani Botro says he's trying to figure out how to pay his bills. He's been shut down for 10 weeks and he's had no income, which puts him behind two months in rent. And now this month, he says he's worried for his family and his five year old son. I want to show you real quickly if James can step back for a second. This is what Hani Botros found in his store. He says he believes it's one of the things that was used to knock out and smash the glass windows of his front door. And he's just devastated over all of this. Reporting live, Jade Hernandez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Jade, and from the air, you get a better sense of how widespread some of the damage is. Let's check in with Scott Reif live in Air 7 HD. Scott. Yeah, John, this is the Town & Country Plaza. It's on 3rd, right across from the Grove. And you can tell this was looted last night. Uh, vandalism, folks going inside, taking food out. The CVS was hit very hard as well. We'll open up. You know, sadly, uh, with things opening up, uh, the stay-at-home orders being abandoned somewhat, people getting out. You're looking at the farmer's market in the Grove. Not people here, very few people here, and it's shut down for the most part. There's some damage actually inside the Grove. You can see in front of Nordstrom's there was a fire that was set. It looks like the Grove is shut down, so I don't know if they'll be open uh, for shopping today. But I want to show you where it all really started yesterday. After it was a peaceful protest, something happened 
on 3rd at Fairfax, right at that intersection right there. And at the top of your screen, you're going to see that's where the first patrol car, you see that charred asphalt? That's where that first patrol car was started on fire, and that's where everything erupted. I want to show you a video we shot just a moment ago in downtown Los Angeles. The National Guard has been called in. As you said, they're staging right next to Staples Center. Very effective spot to get out into the city if they have to. What we're hoping right now is they won't have to, and we won't see today what we saw yesterday and last night. John, Rachel. All right, thank you, Scott. And cleanup is underway for many Southland businesses, especially in the Fairfax district. And that's where we find Eyewitness News reporter Leticia Juarez with more for us. Leticia, it looks like they're very busy behind you. It's a very busy right now here as business owners are cleaning up with the help of volunteers. Just take a look behind me. This is the Goose Salon in the Fairfax district. Uh, just moments ago, they were breaking out the remnants of the broken window from last night's riots that occurred here. They're just putting the last remaining pieces in here. The salon here says they were set to reopen after being closed for some time due to those COVID uh, restrictions on businesses. Uh, we did see as the National Guard was out here earlier, they've been out on the streets patrolling the area to keep the peace as the cleanup here has been getting underway. LA City Mayor Eric Garcetti requested the manpower following the unrest. Initially, protesters led a peaceful march through the streets to protest the death of George Floyd. But the protest, when it ended, that's when you started to see it kind of change as people, some people in the crowd were taking advantage and started looting and vandalizing the businesses. Several shops had their windows broken, including the, nail, uh, the hair salon place that we just showed you and a couple other businesses up and down Melrose and Fairfax. We spoke to a pizzeria on Melrose who told us that they were able to board up their business as a nearby business down the street started burning. Don't loot small businesses because you don't know how hard they work to like get their, their, this is their livelihood. It's never the right time to vandalize and loot because of something else that has happened. We need to all come together in this community. We need to take our brooms, help all these owners clean up and try to unite and come to a solution without looting and vandalism. And and I'll tell you this, uh, residents are definitely doing that. They came up, they woke up this morning, they grabbed their brooms, they grabbed trash bags, and they came out here to help businesses try to pick up those pieces and try to get their businesses reopened. Because as you can imagine, they've been closed for so long amid the coronavirus, and these businesses say they were just set to reopen, but now they're going to have to postpone that. One business owner telling me that they're going to postpone until this unrest is done for before they think about reopening their businesses down here. Reporting in the Fairfax District, Leticia Juarez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Yeah, frustration all around. Leticia, thank you. We're going to have continuing coverage throughout the morning and the day here on ABC7. You can also get the latest by downloading our free ABC7 Los Angeles app, or you can head to our website, abc7.com. A quick look at weather now with Alex Cheney. It is a cloudy start to your Sunday outside. Those clouds should leave us by the time we head into the afternoon. Hope your day is off to as good of a start as it can be. There's a look at Long Beach right now. We see a few clouds out there. Windsock moving a little bit as well. I noticed uh, some gusts picked up just a little bit as we head into last night. Today, you can expect a few more very light gusts outside. Uh, more clouds. We look towards Burbank right now. 67 degrees outside and the Pacific Park at the Santa Monica Pier. Also a little cloudy there. 66 degrees outside. I don't see as many people at the beach today. OK, uh, your daytime high is a little bit warmer than we were just yesterday. So 73 by the beach, 71 in the mountains, high desert into the upper 80s. L.A. and Orange County will be topping out near the upper 70s today in the Inland Empire in the mid 80s. Still to come, I'll share with you my seven day forecast, which includes some very nice, mild conditions as we head into this coming week. John. All right, Alex, thanks. Uh, still ahead, we have much more coverage of the protests across the Southland and, of course, the aftermath, too. We are live in Orange County with more on what's happening there next. Plus, we'll take another look at protests happening across the nation. These are pictures out of Minnesota. I'm Adrian Alpert. Coming up at 3.30 today on Eyewitness Newsmakers, the coronavirus pandemic in California's public colleges and universities, the impact on a total enrollment of nearly 3 million students. Will the majority of them go back to school online? We'll talk to the University of California president, Janet Napolitano, California State University Chancellor, Timothy White, and California Community Colleges Chancellor, Eloy Ortiz Oakley. What can students expect this fall? Be sure to tune in for Newsmakers at 3.30 today, right here on ABC7.
Welcome back. Santa Ana is picking up the pieces after a violent night of demonstrations. The city announcing a new curfew for tonight. Eyewitness News reporter Jessica DeNova is live with the mayor on what the community can expect this evening. Jessica. That's right. In just a little bit, we'll speak with Mayor Miguel Pulido of the city of Santa Ana. You can see these cleanup efforts behind me are underway. This part of Santa Ana College also hit by the graffiti, by the vandalism. We're seeing boarded up windows, shattered windows. And again, with me here is Mayor Miguel Pulido. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. This is what you woke up to this morning. You say it's you actually have been working on this, cleaning up the mess since one. Yeah, we started seeing out the street sweeping and some of the crews. At 1 a.m., we sent out two graffiti removal crews, three more at 7 a.m. this morning. So we were cleaning up the whole area because it was a real, real disaster. It was a mess, a real problem. I mean, and are you worried about today? There's talk of another protest. Again, organizers say it'll be peaceful downtown. They're saying it's permitted. Um, are you concerned after what you saw last night? Well, well we are concerned because yesterday it escalated. It was supposed to be a peaceful protest, and then it wasn't. But then they got down the street to the, you know, smart and final right there, uh, you know, by Edinger. They broke into the store. He started looting, took all the alcohol and, and other uh, supplies. So right now we're encouraging them to restock because we want them to reopen. We just want to keep moving forward. But, yeah, we're concerned about tonight. So we're going to be calling for a curfew at 10 o'clock. It'll go all the way through the night till 5.30 in the morning. We hope we don't have to do that again, but right now we need to be ready. Okay, and what about addressing the concerns of people like today's organizers? They're saying they want all communities, all underrepresented communities, to be protected by police. What are you doing to improve relationships between your community and the police department? Here in Santa Ana, I'm not saying that that's the major cause of the problems. Of course, a lot of this comes from George Floyd and, and that tragic incident we all saw in Minneapolis. But what are we doing at Santa Ana to ensure that the relationship is good between our community and our police department? Well, well, we do a lot of community meetings. We also hire a lot of people from within the city. So our, our police force reflects much of the community that we serve. And I think we've been ahead of that curve for a long, long time. And I don't believe that the violent element that's coming in here is necessarily from Santa Ana. I think Santa Ana folks want to protest and we want them to be able to protest safely and protect their right to do so. We don't want, you know, the whole situation with George Floyd to just get drowned out by violence and now we never have any change or any real, uh, you know, discourse. I think the people that want to demonstrate and encourage that, but it's got to be peaceful and it's got to be, you know, for a cause. It can't be let's run around see what we can loot and see how we can take advantage of the situation. So yesterday we had, you know, many of our Orange County cities saying in support along with the sheriff. So we had over 400 officers yesterday and that really wasn't enough. At times we were losing control, which is why we want the curfew today and we're gonna be ready. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it, Mayor Absolutely. Pulido. Again, a curfew in place for Santa Ana. You heard it here first on ABC7, starting at 10 a.m. to 5.30 tomorrow morning. Mayor tells me if it's necessary, he might consider the National Guard, but for now, he is not going to take that route. It's Reporting live, excuse me, 10 p.m. to 5.30. Reporting live in Santa Ana, Jessica De Nova, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Okay, Jessica, yeah, thanks for that update. We certainly mm -hmm. appreciate it. Uh, still ahead, we'll take another look at the protests across the nation. And it's 1046 on your Sunday morning, and we're looking live at LAX. Not too many people out on the road, but more than we've seen recently with the stay-at-home orders. Cloudy out there, but temperatures today should be nice and comfortable. We'll be right back. Here in the U.S., protests have been erupting across the country, many turning chaotic. Overnight, curfews went into effect in more than two dozen cities, including Los Angeles, Pasadena, Culver City, Beverly Hills, and West Hollywood. The National Guard also arrived in Los Angeles early this morning. In Minneapolis, police confronted protesters out after curfew by firing tear gas into a group of marchers. And on the streets of New York City, protesters clashed with police in Brooklyn. In Florida, President Trump denounced the violence. I stand before you as a friend and ally to every American seeking justice and peace 
And I stand before you in firm opposition to anyone exploiting this tragedy to loot, rob, attack, and menace. Healing, not hatred, justice, not chaos, are the mission at hand. After the president returned to the White House, several hundred protesters gathered outside. All right, we've got some clouds to begin your Sunday morning outside as we look towards Malibu. Typically, we can see towards the ocean with this camera, but too many clouds. So we're going to be seeing some clouds outside until we head into the afternoon. It's going to take a while for all that cloud coverage to burn off. Satellite picture. So today, a little bit warmer than just yesterday. We had a really nice trough of some cool air just on the California coast. It is now pushed in just a little bit, so that's letting a high pressure rebuild just slightly. We're going to see a really slight warming trend over these next few days as we push into next week. So going to be some really mild, consistent numbers numbers coming up here in the seven day forecast. But here are your highs for Sunday. 100 degrees in Palm Springs, 86 in Riverside, 78 in Irvine. We're really nice by the coastline into the low end 70s. A warm 77 in Long Beach as far as the coast goes. 78 in Los Angeles, 84 in Covina, 84 in Ontario as well. 80 over in Encino for today. 76 in Thousand Oaks, 71 in Malibu. So once again, going to be a really nice day today. Just some areas going to be feeling a little bit warmer than, than yesterday. You'll notice that. Seven day forecast, 78 degrees today and a very slight warm up. As I mentioned, we're going to be in the low end 80s for a couple of days. And then we'll see those temperatures fall back down by the time we head towards Thursday with a very light chance of showers as well. So just a very quick trip into the 80s and we get back to the mid 70s. Temperatures not changing um, amongst maybe just about five degrees for the next week. Valley's Inland Empire, 82 to today, a bigger temperature jump over there. 90 degrees by Wednesday. Eventually the temperature is coming back down by the back half of the week with those rain chances coming your way for Thursday. Coastline looks great over the next week. Uh, low end 70s outside, close to the mid 70s at best, and then the upper 60s for Thursday and Friday. So the coastline is looking all right. Mountain communities, low end 70s, get to the mid 70s, eventually the mid to upper 70s by Wednesday. And then the temperatures come back down for the back half of the week as we head towards next weekend. Deserts will be in the mid 80s all week long. So very mild, consistent stuff. Last week was an excessive heat warning. Not even close to that this week. Much better stuff. John. Yeah, it sounds better, Alex. Thanks. Uh, before we continue to breaking coverage, we want to take a moment to honor another group of local graduates. No matter the circumstances, the class of 2020 deserves to be recognized and celebrated. So we wanted to make sure we continue to do that this morning. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Welcome back. This is the first weekend in California that churches were allowed to reopen with new rules and guidelines. And this morning, the African Methodist Episcopal Church in Harvard Heights did see some worshipers outside its doors. Those people were turned away because services were held online. One woman told us that she showed up this morning with a protest on her mind. A lot of love. That's what the city needs. A lot of love and understanding and compassion. That's what the city needs. According to the new rules, churches can allow services limited to 25% capacity or no more than 100 worshipers, whichever number is lower. Several vigils are set for today in honor of George Floyd. In Compton, he's being remembered at the MLK Monument. The vigil is set for 6.30 this evening. Meanwhile, in Pasadena, a candlelight protest is set for 7 tonight at City Hall. And in Huntington Beach, people will be gathering tomorrow at Lifeguard Tower number 13. That vigil is set to begin at 7.25 p.m. And that's all the time we have for right now. A press conference coming up at noon with the mayor.